Tiny houses, permaculture, centropics, community. This week's episode tackles so many of my absolute favorite topics. I am very excited to share this incredible place with you. G'day Craig, How's great going? to see you mate. Yeah, good to see you too mate. This is a really spectacular place that you've created here. Thank you so much, yeah, it's so good to have you here. There is just so much to unpack and so much going on in this space. But first of all, can you just tell me a little bit about what it is that you've created here? Yeah, we're at a place called Shambhala Farm. And this is basically me trying to create my dream Shambhala, my, my paradise. When I had that vision, it, it always had gardens and plants and as off-grid as possible, uh, somewhere I could raise my family in nature, basically. How on earth did all of this come to be? Because it's such a massive undertaking that you've got here. Yeah, it's been layered over the last decade. In fact, it started 15 years ago. I was in Sydney, uh, didn't know anything about growing food. And I had a wake-up call, and the first part of that wake-up was the uh, 2008 financial crash. Uh, I was in business, and I, it was a real big kind of like, oh my God, like, there's, things are shaking, the, the foundations of what we call our society, our economy. And then at the same time, just prior to that, I, was, I found out I was going to be a dad. And then that really sparked this need and desire to provide for my children, and it struck me that I'm going to move out of the city, move on to the land. I wanted to go off grid. So we did that, we raised our children in a little cabin up in the, the mountains of Mullaney. And then I met the local farmer. His name was Jim, I was standing in Jim's field. And I realized this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I just dedicated the next year of my life to being his apprentice and I learned everything that I could from him. And when he retired, I had to take a leap of faith and, and buy my own farm. And, and this is where we are now, just near Noosa, right near my favorite surfing beach. And I love it. This is my dream life. And this is where I wanna raise my family. And this is us doing what I feel like we can do to provide for the, the next generation. And so how much land do you have here? Uh, so we've got 12 acres here in Dunan. And so the farming ethos here is very much based around permacultural principles. Yes, uh, permaculture with an element of sacred living. So I guess Shambhala living is the ethos that we've placed. That's the, the company name. Shambhala stands for heaven on earth or place of bliss. And, and I went in search of that. And when this concept of Shambhala came to me, it was about living a magical life and, and I loved that concept so I went in search of my Shambhala and that took me from the Sydney to off grid and and then I realized oh I want to name my property I want to name the farm Shambhala farm so when we came out here we we called it Shambhala farm and I realized that Shambhala wasn't somewhere you go it's a way of living it was something that I become so when we started growing food it was like my dharma it was like my purpose it was a way of staying connected to meditation and yoga and breath work and each day I got to come out and be in the elements and you know it was exactly what I'd always dreamed of and realized that I could do this as my living and I could provide food for my community and it's been such a satisfying journey. One of the things that I've always loved about permaculture is this idea that it's sort of biomimicry in action. It's learning lessons from the natural world becoming really good observers of what nature does by itself and then changing our habits and behaviors to work with it and to make the space even more abundant. Yes, yeah, yeah. Permaculture and syntropics has taught me that nature is just so abundant, like not just like one plus one equals two, it's like one plus one equals 10. It's, it's just when you bring all the elements together, we have this enormous synergy when all the elements come together and it's far, far greater than the sum of its parts. And, yeah. and that is so inspiring. It sure is. And what you've created here is just so abundant. Can you talk to me about the land and what you've got growing here? Yeah, so when I first got here, the fields were just flat. You could do a 360 and you could see as far as you could. Everything was, you know, ankle high crops. 
So this became the testing ground, the place where I could put all that I'd learned and read into practice. So we moved here into a tent, then we upgraded to a, a camper trailer. And as soon as we got here, I was out in the field planting, um, just following what Jim had taught me. So we were planting all the market garden crops. And then over time, I started to learn more about syntropics and bringing food forests and forest dynamics into the equation. And that's when things just exploded and, and took off. So now we've got bananas, we've got cassava, we've got arrowroot, we've got native trees, we've got mangoes and avocado trees, animals, and we've still got all the things that I love, which is all of the annual vegetables and herbs and salad greens. So we've got two main fields where we grow our food. It's evolved over the last few years where we've had lots of woofers. For those that don't know woofers, willing workers on organic farms. So they've all come and stayed on the land, helped us work the farm, grow the food. Then I met my wife, Chrissy, and she had a passion for yoga and I had a passion for food growing. So when she came and joined me on the farm a few years ago, we mixed the two and blended the, the yoga and, and food growing. And now Shambhala Farm is a yoga shala, it's got food growing, we run courses and we've got some people staying here uh, in tiny homes and it's just become this really beautiful, abundant community where nature is the, the heart and the core of our ethos. And it's magical, it really is magic every day. I, I, I love walking around the farm with my wife and my little girl. That's yeah. incredible. So when you started here, you initially moved into a tent and your house and your setup came later on, but you also have an incredible tiny house community here. Can you talk to me about how all that came to be? Over the years, we had backpackers staying in tents and vans and, and all sorts of little huts and things like that. And they would stay for anywhere from two weeks to three months. And they would do a program where they were learning to grow food. They were from all across the world and they would stay here at the farm and work with us. And then over the years, that started to evolve. And then we started to have our first tiny home come out. And then another tiny home came out. It was liberating because it meant that they were completely self-sufficient. Everyone had their nice space that they could retreat to and they would all come together and work on the land, grow food, harvest together. And then that's just continued to evolve. So now we've got a local community that stay with us and it's just beautiful. They're raising, we've got lots of children now on the farm, lots of different families and they're all contributing in, in their own way to what we do on the farm. And they've all still got their own jobs so they still go off and, and do whatever their purpose and passions are. That's incredible. And so each of the tiny houses has its own lot. Yes, that's right. We've, we've put a, a garden around each space. So they've got a private space that they can grow their own gardens or, or just have their kids playing and in a safe area. And then we've got some community gardens and, and share chickens and share pigs and share food forests that they come. And then we've also got the yoga shala. They, so there's lots of communal spaces, but lots of nice private space that people can retreat to and just chill out. And that's the best of both worlds, isn't it? Because you get to plug into the community as much as you want, but then you also have your own private space to retreat to when you need it. Exactly, yeah. So we all share, we've got a fire night tonight, where we'll share a meal together around a fire and we do that regularly. And often the kids are walking or riding their bikes around the farm. It's just a really beautiful place to grow up and raise a family. That's incredible. And so how does it work here with the parking spaces? Is there a sort of exchange for the lot? Yes, yeah, so everyone's just on a an exchange. So just like we did in the woofer days where people would do a day of work and they would get food and lodging, then now we've upgraded it so that they got the tiny homes, they got their space, they got access to electricity and water, and then they just do an exchange. So some of them are working and some just pay a, a, an amount of money that goes towards the community so we can afford compost and seedlings and all the things that we need to run this community. And then others choose to work in exchange. That's right, yeah. That's yep. a great way of doing it. Yeah. And then the way that this is also integrated with the teaching and the yoga shala is really incredible as well. And having that yoga shala as sort of the central hub of this community is just beautiful. Yes. The yoga shala is situated in the, the heart of the farm and it is 
the heart of that ethos because it is about living from the heart, seeing the world as a beautiful, sacred place. When we come from the yoga point of view, everything becomes sacred. So the yoga that sits in the, the heart of the farm, it's a beautiful Bali inspired space. It reminds us of where we met, Chrissy and I. We want to bring that sense of Bali ness, that kind of closeness to nature, going back, you know, it feels like we're going back in time is, is what I feel when I'm walking around here. And I love to share that timeless way of living with as many people as I can. So obviously this is such a productive bit of land. You're growing so much food for your family and for your local community, but you're also supplying to the extended community as well. Yes, for the first 10 years, we were growing food and taking it to the Noosa farmers markets, to the Kwana farmers markets. We had a farm gate here, and then we also did home deliveries. So we were servicing and supplying food to about 500 people every weekend through all of those different means. In 2020, when COVID hit, and also that was the year that my daughter was born, things changed. Uh, I had a big awakening, and the awakening came in the form of, if I want to provide for my daughter, is providing food the best way? And that saying of give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, or teach him to fish and you feed him for a lifetime, that came up and I realized, oh, I've been providing food for my local community, which has been amazing. And now it's time to educate my community and help them grow their own food. And it was the same year that I watched the documentary, Our Planet from David Attenborough. And it hit me so hard because in there, it was saying that we are facing some of the biggest problems that we've ever faced. And COVID, which had disrupted our whole you know, economy and, and way of life. So I decided in 2020 that instead of just providing food for our community, we're going to start documenting everything that we've learned over the last 10 years, and we're gonna turn it into a course, both on farm and online. So we had a videographer come out, we filmed every single step of the process of, of how to create soil, how to plant seeds, how to build garden beds, different styles of garden beds, straw bales, no matter where someone lived, whether it was a, in a unit or a home, that we could show them how they could grow their own food and become more resilient. And now I feel like I've got hope for my daughter for the future of, or for her future, and for the future of, of our species, because I feel like soil, is the answer to an abundant regenerative future and it's the gardeners of the world that will become the change that will create a regenerative way of living. And in so many ways, food in the garden is better than money in the bank because as we learned recently, sometimes money in the bank, it doesn't buy food if it's not on the shelves. Absolutely, so it is so important today to start a garden, to start that process of regenerating the soil, because that's where it begins. If we can start composting, composting our waste, turning into amazing black gold soil, grow our food, look after the species and have as much diversity in our gardens. And instead of it being self-sufficiency, I'm now looking for community sufficiency. I could not agree with you more. And I think there's this misnomer as well, that in order to achieve that, you need a lot of land, you need a lot of resources, but it is possible <laughs> to do that on the tiniest of home scales. And you have set up a phenomenal example of a compact backyard garden right here. Do you reckon we can go take a look at your personal garden? Yeah, absolutely, let's go. All right. This is incredible what you've done here. And what I immediately love about it is it shows that a garden can not only be productive, but immensely beautiful at the same time. Thanks Bryce, yeah. The intention of this garden was to, to be an example of, you can make a beautiful garden, it can be productive, it can be fun for the children. So that's what this was all about. I love that it's laid out like a mandala as well. 
I had this vision to make this garden beautiful because it's in our home garden. Funnily enough, this was just a vacant grassy block. We had the idea that, well, what if we took a piece of land that was the size of a standard backyard and we show people just how much food you can grow in that space. And, and that's what this project was all about. But I wanted to do it in a way that was beautiful and had a sacred element to it. So we thought, well, we want it to be a mandala. We didn't know what shape to do. And I was still in my farmer head and I was, I was gridding this place up with straight lines. And the thing that kept standing out was the trampoline was, it was always in the way. So I was about to get rid of it. And then I had this idea of what if we put the trampoline right in the center and we do rings and circles around it. So that's where the idea came from. And I love that it's got play is in the center of it. So Birdie gets to be right in the center of the garden. Her plays is all integrated into the garden. The mandala makes it beautiful. You can spend, you know, a long time just walking, doing laps, whereas Rose, you know, you get to the end, you gotta turn around. This you can just continue. I just often just walk and it's like a meditation just to walk around the garden. And, I, and that is something I love. And I love the way that it just allows that playful energy to radiate out into the rest of the garden. Absolutely, yeah. And what size is the garden here? So from fence to fence, it's 16 meters by 16 meters. And the reality is that you can still grow an abundant garden on even a fraction of this size. Absolutely. We've got students from the course that are growing on balconies, on, on units. They're growing an amazing array because you can go vertical, you can do trellising, you can do kitchen bench growing, sprouts even. So we take in all those accounts and the whole idea of this was to actually eat only from this backyard for one year. But you just and did so you do it? We're still doing it. So we've definitely been able to do our breakfast. Um, we've got chickens for our eggs. We've got mushrooms now. We've got bananas, citrus. We've got a whole lot of root crops. There is so much food. It's been amazing. I can't believe just how much food can come out of just a small garden like this. That's just so exciting. And it's just a joy as well. I mean, putting your hands in soil is the best kind of therapy. Absolutely, for both adults and both children, it is so healthy and it's been proven now in science that it's like an antidepressant, the soil. So it's, we should all be getting our hands in the soil regularly or connecting with the plants. And that's one of the biggest things. I always say to people, there's more to the garden than just what you harvest. Just being around the garden, smelling the garden, touching the garden, this is all part of what makes up our microbiome. The microorganisms that are in the soil help to create the microorganisms that are in our microbiome. So it's so important for us to be connected to soil and gardens. So even if you only harvested a little bit of lettuce, on a balcony, that is still providing you massive benefit towards your health and wellness. That is one of the biggest benefits to people in small gardens that you're getting more, way more than just the harvest. And obviously there is a learning curve involved with all of that, but thankfully you have your very special e-course for people wanting to learn how to do it. And that will cover gardens of any size, right? Yes, that's right, yeah. So we cover the 12 core fundamentals to grow on any scale. So to grow on a farm like this, all the way from a backyard to a balcony, it's the same 12 fundamentals that we just need to get right. And then we're growing in abundance. That's amazing. And we will make sure that we get a special deal for our viewers. So if you are interested in learning to grow a beautiful garden like this, check the link in the description below for our promo code. Craig, this is just such an incredible place that you've created here. Beyond your beautiful home garden, Shambhala is exactly what you set out to create. It looks like heaven on earth. The way that it's all centered around the beautiful yoga shala, the incredibly abundant gardens, the beautiful tiny home community that you've created here. It's all just come together in incredible synergy to create an absolutely magical place. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you so much, Bryce. Thanks for coming out. My pleasure. This is a truly inspiring and incredible place. Shambhala combines so many of my great loves. Tiny homes, permaculture, and tropics. 
It is abundance in practice. It is biomimicry. It is a model for how we as human beings can have a lighter and more positive impact on the world. It's just a treasure.